Greg is going to be demonstrating how to bleed and flush out the brake system. My name is Keith and I will be explaining the process. Okay, to start off with, you'll need to go out and buy a couple of 8 ounce bottles of brake fluid. Remember, an unopened bottle of brake fluid has a long shelf life. An open bottle of brake fluid should be discarded within a few weeks of being open. An open bottle will accumulate water and this will destroy the life of the brake fluid. The hydraulic system needs to be bled any time a brake component is replaced that involves opening the hydraulic system, such as replacing a caliper, a wheel cylinder, or a brake hydraulic line. This is also a perfect time to flush out the old brake fluid and replace it with new brake fluid. Flushing the system is inexpensive and does not take much more time than just bleeding the hydraulic system. Remove the top of the master cylinder reservoir and suck out as much of the old brake fluid as you can with a turkey baster or syringe. Then clean any sediment out of the reservoir with a clean lint free rag. Then fill and top off the reservoir with fresh fluid. Then install the cover back on the reservoir. Warning. Fluid will squirt out of an open reservoir every time the pedal is released. And do not spill brake fluid on any painted surfaces. It will remove the paint pretty much immediately. During the bleeding procedure, you will need to check the level periodically as you bleed the system. Do not let the reservoir get more than half empty. Some manufacturers recommend flushing the brake fluid every 24 months or 20,000 miles. Others recommend every 36 months or 30,000 miles. And others recommend flushing the brake fluid even more frequent. You will need to check with the manufacturer's service information for brake fluid maintenance specific intervals for your vehicle. You may ask why would you want to change out the brake fluid? Well, the brake fluid provides lubrication for component seals that slide back and forth. The fluid is designed not to freeze or boil, also provides protection for brake system rubber and hard parts from corrosion. Brake fluid over time gets contaminated with dirt and abrasive metal particles from moving parts like the master cylinder, the calipers. Most common brake fluids has the chemical glycol in it that causes brake fluid to absorb moisture from the moment it is put into the system. Even though the brake hydraulic system is enclosed, there are still microscopic holes in the brake hydraulic system that allow small amounts of water to get into the system over time. Water promotes corrosion, which can cause pitting in the calipers, wheel cylinders, master cylinder, steel brake lines, and ABS components. In addition, water contamination lowers the fluid boiling point and increases the danger of brake failure because vapor pockets can form in the fluid when it gets too hot. Okay, you'll need to jack up the vehicle and place jack stands under the vehicle for safety. Next, remove all four wheels so you can get to the bleeder screw. Some vehicles you might be able to get to the bleeders with the wheels on. This is only if you can turn a wrench on the bleeder screws so you can open and close them. Check all the bleeder screws can be turned and opened. You'll need a box wrench that will fit the bleeders. A little penetrating oil drizzled on the screws the day before will help. So will some tapping with a hammer to break any corrosion up. Just another note, using the wrong tools like a crescent wrench or vice grips probably will round off the bleeder screws. If you can't turn the bleeders without breaking them off, you will need to replace the brake component with the broken bleeder screw. A little patience, penetrating oil, and light tapping with a hammer on the component may prevent you from applying too much torque and breaking off the bleeder screw. <laughs> This brake bleeding process will do the trick for most vehicles with or without an anti-lock brake system. Some brake system bleeding procedures are a little more advanced when it comes to brake systems with ABS. So you'll need to consult your service manual for your vehicle. Some examples of additional steps for bleeding the ABS system. There may be a bleeder screw right on top of the ABS controller that will need to be opened and closed. Or you may need to rent or borrow an ABS capable scan tool. Okay, start with the furthest bleeder screw from the master cylinder, and this is normally at the right rear of the vehicle. First, get a piece of clear.
clear plastic tubing. Aquarium tubing is fine. So push one end of the tube over the brake bleeder screw and put the other end of the tube into a small clear bottle with an inch or two of clean brake fluid in it. This will keep the air from being sucked back into the brake hydraulic system. Helpful tip, put a piece of 1x4 piece of wood or some other spacer under the brake pedal to prevent the brake pedal from traveling too far when the line pressure is released. This prevents the master cylinder seals from being damaged by ridges caused by wear and settlement in the master cylinder chamber. You will need a helper for this part. Your helper needs to be someone who can follow instructions exactly. The helper won't get dirty. Have your helper sit in the driver's seat and await your orders. Now here's the drill. You say down. Your helper depresses the brake pedal about the same amount of force needed to keep the car from rolling forward at a traffic light and keeps the pressure on the pedal. Then open the bleeder screw a quarter turn. The brake pedal will sink and the helper will need to keep constant pressure on the brake pedal. As your helper presses the pedal down, you'll see some of the old contaminated fluid will trickle down the tube into your bottle. When the trickling stops, close the bleeder screw, then you say up. Your helper says up and removes their foot from the pedal. Repeat this process until fresh clear fluid comes from the bleeder screw and there are no more air bubbles coming out of the bleeder screw. Every half dozen or so iterations top off the reservoir with fresh fluid. Do not allow the reservoir to get more than half empty. Air can be sucked into the master cylinder unless the fluid remains well above the bottom of the reservoir that feeds the cylinder. Once clean fluid comes out and there are no more air bubbles, tighten the bleeder screw. Next, repeat the process with the right front and finally with the left front. Follow that with a few strokes of fresh fluid from all four again. Don't forget to keep the reservoir topped off. Replace the wheels, lower your vehicle, top off your brake reservoir, Flushing and bleeding your brake system is now complete.